Hi, welcome to this tutorial series on graph basics. In this video, we will see how the graph describes things in the world. Imagine you hear your friends discussing the golden ratio theorized by Pythagoras. You are not interested in this topic until someone mentions Mona Lisa and Egyptian pyramids, on which people used to research about the golden ratio. You are excited to hear Mona Lisa because you just saw it at Love Hair last week. It is the most famous oil painting by Da Vinci. And the pyramids also excite you, since it is the place that you want to visit most after the Love Hair. Now we've got a graph formed by part of the discussion and your thoughts stimulated. This graph can be expanded. Maybe you have a friend named Jason who also visited Love Hair and takes coding as a hobby. Maybe he has a colleague named Alice who likes oil painting and live broadcasting. Maybe Jason loves Alice. Whether Alice loves him, we don't know. But one thing for sure, Alice loves herself. The essence of graph is to describe things of the world, whatever happened or not, fact or imagination. Let's discuss some scenarios where graph helps us understand the world and solve the problems in our life. In this graph, the green nodes represent the bicycles provided by a shared service company. The yellow nodes represent users that rode these bikes in the past five days. Each arrow, which we call an edge, indicates a ride on a bike by a user. By intuition, we can distinguish the majority of users and bikes from the graph, as most bikes serve dozens of users and most users ride the same bike only once or twice. The rest of bikes and users are the cases that should arouse the interest of the cycling operator, like the bike on the upper left corner, which is rarely ridden, might be more functional and cannot provide service, and the bike in the center of the graph with intensive edges from the same user might be illegally occupied. A graph where multiple edges are allowed between two nodes is multigraph. The graph in this slide is a multigraph. A graph where only one edge is allowed for one pair of nodes is simple graph. This is an example of simple graph, showing the structure of forum threads. The blue nodes represent the articles, which are the first post of each thread. The red nodes represent the comment, which are the rest of posts in the thread. Yellow nodes, same as the previous example, are users who post the articles and comment. There are two types of edges. A red edge points from a comment to an article or another comment, showing which post this comment is about. A black edge points from a user to a comment or an article that he posts. Its red is an article with a group of comments directly connected through red edges. Intuitively, the bigger the cluster, the more popular the thread, as the size of cluster corresponds to the number of comments in the thread. Compare this graph with the one in the previous scenario and count their types of nodes and edges. They both have more than just one type of nodes and edges. A graph that contains multiple types of nodes or edges are heterogeneous graph, and both these two graphs are heterogeneous graphs. A graph composed of only one type of nodes and edges is homogeneous graph. This graph is also heterogeneous and simple graph. The pink and purple nodes represent email address and phone number. The green nodes are application forms that require the personal emails and phone numbers to be provided. Email address and phone number are usually treated as a combination of ID of a person. And the structure normally seen is isolated triplet, composed of an email address, a phone number, 
and an application filled with them. Any structure larger than a triplet is resulted by sharing emails or phone numbers between applications, which is suggesting a chance of information misfilling or reapplication by the same or different person. The non-triplet structures are usually investigated since reapplication is forbidden in many cases, like coupon distribution, credit card issuance, and so on. Criminal gangs are sometimes found hiding behind a chain or a structure that is more complicated, sharing fewer IDs to apply for more benefit. This is a homogeneous graph as there's only one type of nodes which represent bank account and one type of edges representing transactions between account. This is also a multigraph as multiple transactions exist between two accounts. This graph shows transaction chains from the source account to the destination. And the longest chain contains up to seven steps via six intermediary account. To abstract such long chains from a network, we need a graph system that supports edge direction with the sound capability of deep graph traversal. Such long chains can be applied for anti-money laundering, supply chain analysis, guarantee chain detection, and risk early warning, etc. A graph where the direction of edge is appreciated during graph query is called directed graph, like this graph in the current slide. Otherwise, the graph is called undirected graph. Not only the direction of edge, but the weight of edge is also critical when performing calculations on a graph. This is an undirected graph where each edge is assigned with a number. Imagine the nodes are regions in a village that needs power supply, and the numbers are the cost factors if laying and maintaining power cables between two regions. In order to figure out the optimized cabling plan with minimum total cost, we can apply graph algorithms such as MST. The red edges in the result are the routes where cables can be laid. MSD is the short form of minimum spanning tree, which connects all the nodes in the graph by part of the edges, of which the weight sum is minimal. Such number on edge is called weight. A node can also have weight when needed. A graph where nodes or edges have weight is weighted graph, just like this graph. Otherwise, the graph is unweighted. With the weight given, we can calculate the MST for purpose of grid wiring, plumbing, internet cabling, and other occasions of subgraph extraction. We can also calculate the shortest path for making suggestions on a driving route, in which case the direction of edge that may represent the direction of traffic should be kept in consideration. This is our last example, where both the weight and the direction of the edge are counted. It shows the structure of shareholdings. The green nodes represent corporate entities, and the yellow nodes represent natural persons. All the edges are pointing from shareholders to corporate, with the weight showing the shareholding percentage. Please note, the shareholder, which is the initiator of an edge, can be either a corporate or a natural person. While the terminator of an edge can only be the corporate. If we iteratively track the shareholders from corporate against the direction of edge, then the ultimate shareholder must be a natural person. And this person is called ultimate beneficial owner, shortened as UBO. A UBO may hide very far from the corporate, but still intuitive enough to be caught on a graph display. When calculating the total shares owned by the UBO over a corporate, all the shareholding paths should be exhausted. For example, based on the current path, the shareholding percentage owned by this UBO is around 7%. 
But if all the shareholding paths are calculated, the result is over 50%. The nodes and edges in the graph are usually designed into different schemas in order to represent entities and relations of different types. These are some node schemas corresponding to the entity types in the previous examples. For each schema, there's a set of items called properties, which are the information to be recorded for the entity. These are some edge schemas and properties corresponding to the relation types in the previous examples. Once the schemas and properties of nodes and edges are designed, we got the graph model. The graph model determines the topological structure of the graph, which further affects the complexity and efficiency of graph query. This is the summary of this lesson and please follow our lessons in the future. We will show you more about Audible Graph System and Graph Query.